is the middle of the road on FLIR's price point. They have a K2 or K1 or K2, then they have a K33 and K45 series. K33 is what I call firefighter proof, one button, turn it on, go to work, which I like those. The K45 is multi-button, you can do different cool things with it and you can limit some of the features if you like. Then you get into the K53, 55, and 65 are all NFPA worthy resolution quality, but the only one that's NFPA certified is K65. There are currently only four NFPA certified cameras on the market, MSA, Bullard, FLIR, and Argus. If you are using AFG funds, you have to buy an NFPA 1801 certified camera that meets the new standard. You hear me when I say that, because there are departments that have messed up and turned around and had to give the money back, write their own check. This is your entire instruction manual in one slide. It's a field of view of 38 by 51. I kind of showed you, hinted at what that gangster grip does for you by flipping that. The resolution on it's 240 by 180, which is 43,200 pixels. So it doesn't meet the NFPA standard, but because of image enhancement, this camera outperforms any other camera at its price point. If I, lack, if I lined up the, the Bullard TSX, if I lined up the uh, Scott B320 or any of them, this is gonna give you a better picture because it has something called image enhancement. It sharpens the details in the background, which is really cool if you have a fire right here, it'll outline the door behind the fire. Only two cameras on the market do that. Previous cameras, you'll have a fire, you'll see nothing behind it. It blocks it out due to the colorization. One application mode, one button, but you can go in and program it. But once you program it, it's set until you change it again. It sees from zero to 1200 degrees. It has a 60 hertz refresh rate, which is fast. The downside is it's not intrinsically safe, and FLIR won't tell you this, but I will. I'll tell you every good, bad thing about every camera. The downside of this camera is when it sees heat, you'll have about a second to two second delay from it going from high to low sensitivity because of that FSX image enhancement. So if you scan too fast, you will miss something. Over temperature failure with this camera, if you ever hold any newer thermal imaging camera, remember this, and a red triangle shows up in the center of the screen with a thermometer on it. That means the inside of a vacuum sealed device is over 500 degrees for five minutes or 250 for 20 minutes. Think about that. The only, if you rip this thing apart, the screen is this deep, the detector is this deep, the rest of that's all air. So you heat it up, all of that, which this is designed to be dropped on six feet, blasted by 500 degree furnace, all that. If it's 500 degrees inside, how hot is it where you are? Hand me another nozzle, please. This one's melting, sir. That's where you're at, right? So that's your overview of it, and it has something known as a thermal sensitivity rating of 40 millikelvin. We'll get into that, but basically what you need to know is NFPA requires it cannot be greater than 80. The lower the number, the better your chances of differentiating objects of similar temperature, such as a child and a 99 or 100 degree pile of clothes. See why that's beneficial? And it has the image enhancement.